I'm Jamara Stevens for Borman Schools Television Network. Welcome to this edition of Borman Township Today with our host, Mr. Bill Light, Borman Township Fiscal Officer, and his guest, Mr. Larry Moliterno, Borman Township Trustee. Today's program will give us a behind-the-scenes look at the extensive planning and coordination that goes on in the overall operations of our township. Thanks for joining us today, Mr. Light and Mr. Moliterno. Let's start with you, Mr. Light. We have often heard you comment on our township being run under a team approach. Can you explain that in more detail? Yes. Um, it, it, everyone learns by their mistakes. And uh, back in the mid-2006, uh, 2007, uh, we operated uh, with a fractured board. Uh, there wasn't any communication. There wasn't any coordination. Uh, Mr. Moliterno uh, had, had preached that we need a lot of uh, foresight, a lot of planning. And he came up with the Boardman uh, plan. And the Boardman plan was a five-year projection of where we wanted to be in five years. And uh, he didn't get much support out of his former board members. Uh, at the election in 2008, uh, we got a couple of new board members in that bought into the idea. Uh, he and I had been proponents of it. Uh, just, you know, trying to put a, put a number of where we were going to be in the future. And we felt that if we defined our goals, uh, looked at our finances, uh, worked with our actual numbers uh, and projecting that out, we could at least start to move forward. And we did that. We, uh, in my part of that, was to go back five years prior and look at where mo our money came from and how we spent it. Um, and that's something that I do in my accounting practice almost daily. So it was a pretty cumbersome but easy task for me. Then we said, okay, what do we know is going to happen in the next five years? And we didn't know where the inheritance tax was going to go. We didn't know where there were a lot of things. So we said, you know, let's take another look at it. So we started from the expense side and the delivery side. And we always kept the delivery out front. How do we keep the roads clean? How do we keep them in good maintenance? How do we keep them paved? Uh, the police department, how do we uh, uh, maintain a safe uh, community, the fire department, do we have adequate people, do we have adequate equipment. We knew what those items were going to cost us and what we needed to do to get there. Then we went back and revisited the revenues. And our revenues, quite frankly, were falling short. In the past, you know, when you, when you needed money, you went to the public and you said, we need to pass a levy. And we would pass it or we would fail it. When we put this uh, five-year plan together, we were able to come to the community and uh, in our police levy and say to them, if you pass this levy, this is what's going to happen. And we gained a lot of support and the levy passed. And it took three years to implement that money but every piece of, of that promise was made, and it came to fruition. And, and we just finished that last year uh, with hiring our 10th police officer. Great. Mr. Light, what support do you get from the trustees when preparing the budget? Well, uh, it, it, the first pass that I make on the budget is based on the previous year. What did we collect? What did we spend? We know what the... Uh, uh, salaries and wages are going to be based on union contracts. Um, and that's 80% of our budget, uh, with the exception of health insurance. We know almost to the dime what we're going to spend. So 80% of it is pretty simple. Then the other 20%, which, which I refer to as uh, uh, discretionary money to run departments, but the discretionary money only goes so far because you have heat, light, and power that we don't control. 
uh, we have fuel that we don't control. So there are other costs, and when it comes down to the departments being allocated money, they only have about 10% of their budget that they can call discretionary. If I want to buy, well, let's take the fire department. If, if they want to go out and buy what we call turnout gear, new oxygen bottles and things of that nature, um, then they put that together. But then they also have training to consider. So it's up to the department head to allocate those funds. When, when I get that done, we sit down as the trustees and they plug in what they know the township needs outside of the departments. And so with all three of us, uh, the trustees, ourselves, and the township working together, we can generally come out with a budget that isn't, it doesn't make anybody happy uh, because nobody gets what they want, but it meets the needs. And that's the best we can do in today's uh, economic climate. Right. So, Mr. Molitano, how does Mr. Light's input help the trustees? Well, first of all, I found it very odd because when I was first elected and, and came into office, uh, Bill and the fiscal the fiscal officer was not even invited to, into a lot of the discussions with the trustees, uh -huh. and I didn't understand why that was. You know, someone with Bill's experience with the township uh, was vital, and I think that we changed that right away, and, and the fiscal officer became an integral part of the team, which is the way it has to be. And I think what we try to do is, as trustees is, uh, is come up with the vision, come up with our... Uh, our goals of what we want to accomplish, the, the things we'd really like to do with the township, and then we have to sit down with Bill and say, okay, now what can we afford? And um, then to sit back and set priorities and try to be um, strategic about how we're going to move forward, how we're going to utilize the dollars to the best of our abilities, how we're going to stretch it out, the levy dollars as far as we can. And our goal from the beginning is we need to be effective in the way we operate the, the township, but we have to be as efficient as we possibly can be. And we shouldn't waste one dollar on trying to provide those services for the public. Right. Is there anything else either of you would like to add? Well, yes. I think that, uh, you know, when, when it comes down to uh, operating this township, and we're one of the largest townships in the state of Ohio, it takes a cohesive team. And that doesn't mean that any one individual gets his own way every time. Uh, there's a lot of give and take. There's a lot of passion. And I think that if you look at the diverse background of the individuals involved, I'm a CPA. Uh, I've been in practice now for over 40 years. Uh, Larry runs one of the major not-for-profits here in the Mahoning Valley. Uh, Mr. Costello uh, is a, a businessman. He is in the insurance industry. He looks at uh, health care, he looks at uh, uh, insurance packages for us, uh, and his general business background. He's the president of a company with over 100 employees. And then you have, uh, uh, what's the other guy? Oh, Brad Calhoun. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, and Brad's a teacher. And more than a teacher, okay, he's, he works his summers in business, uh, but as a teacher. He was involved in negotiations. That's something that the, the other three are woefully uh, inexperienced at, getting into negotiations, rolling up your sleeves and, and going after, you know, uh, certain pockets and certain needs. And Brad gives us a lot of great insight into the negotiating process and into the negotiating process, which, you know, I'm like a bull in a china shop. This is the way it is. This is all the money I have. And for uh, some reason, Brad's able to schmooze it and make it sound good. And, you know, so with all four of us working and, you know, we have our oars in the water going in the same directions. Uh, and occasionally, you know, there are situations where we disagree uh, but the great thing is we're never disagreeable. Uh, if, they, if the three of them gang up on me and tell me I'm wrong, I accept that because, you know, then I have to step back and say, hey, wait, three, one, there's got to be something. Okay. Uh, and, and the other thing is there's no politics involved. There are absolutely no politics. Uh, we don't bring that to the table. We don't endorse uh, other people. 
uh, running for office, we've had people come to us and say, well, why don't you, you know, just, and we don't do that. We don't want to get involved in politics. And Larry coined the phrase uh, eight years ago, and it was do the right thing. And we've lived with that moniker. And I believe that with the four of us working together, uh, we're accomplishing that goal for Boardman Township. There are situations where sometimes you have to sit back and say, you know, is this going to affect my elected position in the future? Well, if you do the right thing, you got to just throw caution to the wind and, and say, here it is, and here's why I'm, I'm supporting it. So, there you Well, are. and I appreciate you say sometimes we disagree, but it's always respectful. Yes. And I think that's a big part of it. You talk about Brad's experience with, uh, with the negotiating. What's really great about that is Brad's been on both sides of the table. So he knows how we can go come together to come up with a fair contract when we sit there and negotiate. Um, but I think the other thing, I'm going to go back a little bit. When we first sat down and we started talking about doing the strategic plan and people said, well, uh, government can't do strategic plans. So we said, well, why not? I mean, good businesses do strategic plans. If you're not always thinking about what's in the best interest of our community five years from now and the decisions are, are being made that way, prior you know, to us all coming together, the decisions that were made at the township were knee-jerk reactions based on what was happening now, always reacting to the times instead of saying, no, we want to be proactive, we want to be futuristic thinking. And I think that the four of us came together uh, at a time when the, the township was, uh, I would say, probably at one of its most desperate times. And if it wasn't for the fact that we were a team and that we were trying to do the right thing and we wanted to work together for the best interest of the township, I'm not so sure we could have came through it as strong as we have. And the great thing about where we're at now is we can sit here and we can talk about what we've done uh, in, the, in the last couple of years and we can talk about how proud we are of the great history of Boardman. Uh, we can talk about some of our accomplishments that we've had together as a team. But what we're always talking about is not just being proud of what Boardman has been and proud of our accomplishments, but excited about how great the future can be. And we're going to always be talking about what's going to be happening next. So for someone like yourself, we want you to have opportunities to stay in Boardman, to live in Boardman, you know, to raise your family in Boardman and to, and to have your career here. And that's our job, is to make sure that that's available for you when it's your time. And I think that's what we're always talking about is what's the future of Boardman and how we can we uh, prepare for that next generation and prepare for rede uh, redevelopment in our community. And that's what makes it so exciting for us. Awesome. And you know, not to interrupt, but you are part of Boardman's future. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we're here and we have this great venue to get our position out. And one thing we want to stress is we want to build a strong farm team. Mm -hmm. We want people to get energized. We want you to say, hey, wait, you know, I'd like to be part of that. And when you have the opportunity and throw your hat in the ring, then we want you to remember that's how we operate. And we want you to be a part of that. And every high school senior graduating should know that. Right. So. Great. Thanks for being with us today, Mr. Light and Mr. Moliterno. It's obvious that a key factor to a successfully organized township government system starts with strong leadership by our township trustees and fiscal officer, Mr. Light, along with the oversight of our township administrator, Mr. Jason Lurie, and the department heads. Thank you both for being with us today, and we thank you for your continued efforts and dedication in keeping Boardman a nice place to call home. Thanks for joining us today. From BSTN, this is Jamara Stevens. Let's keep striving for excellence.